Welcome to the art project. Uh, we are going to do a Georgia O'Keeffe project. If you're new here, please subscribe. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. First thing we're going to do is a half inch border. My paper is 11 inches by 14 inches. So you may want to do a smaller or larger border depending on what size paper you're using. Always draw two marks, one close to the top and one close to the bottom to connect, to make sure that your line is parallel with the sides of the paper. Step number two, you're going to draw a larger than life flower from a reference photo, making sure uh, the image goes off all sides of the paper. I have some wonderful uh, photo references that you can get on Teacher Pay Teachers and those a link to that will be in the description down below. When you're drawing this, uh, you can use a pencil if you want to. I went ahead and used a Sharpie pen because I'm not concerned about getting the flower 100% right. I am not drawing that flower in the photograph so much as I am drawing a, photo, a flower like the one in the photograph. So I'm just using that photograph to get some basic ideas of what an orchid looks like and then I am filling in uh, the image and I'm trying to draw as large as I can I started off um, trying to draw the very first petal uh, proportionate to the paper and I did have to think large I had to draw large and then after that it was just a matter of making sure that each line was proportionate with the lines that I drew before Again, you want to fill the paper. Georgia O'Keeffe is known for her extremely large uh, paintings of flowers. So while a flower might be, you know, two inches across, her paintings were sometimes four feet across. So draw large. Step number three, using watercolor, you're going to paint each shape with two or more colors. Uh, if you look at, at closely at some of Georgia O'Keeffe's flowers, one of the things that makes them so great is her blending from one color to another, sometimes two or three different colors in a particular area. Uh, in order to keep the shapes from looking flat, uh, she blended and modeled her paint and she and most of hers used oil paint we're using watercolor for this one i like to use this um, method where i fill the little space with water kind of like a little swimming pool and then i just drip paint into the section and let it spread bounce around the paper so that you don't have uh, so that you're not painting in any two places that are wet right next to each other. In other words, paint in a section, and while that's drying, go in and paint another section totally, you know, on the other side of the paper if necessary in order to keep uh, two wet areas from blending into one another. And that's pretty much it. You're going to spend uh, the rest of the time just repeating that. F what I did here was for the flower, for the orchid, I used uh, red and yellow and for the background or for the leaves around it I used a dark green and a yellow I think that my painting overall in the end is probably a little bit too saturated it is the colors in it are just way too bold but um, it does make for a very strong painting, makes for a very colorful uh, painting. Uh, I may come back later on with some uh, color pencils or uh, more watercolor and maybe tone down some of the areas. But you won't see that here in this uh, video. This video is pretty much about just the blending, uh, the drawing at larger than life, using the reference photos, and just kind of filling everything in. Uh, a little bit at a time.
there is a lot of uh, drying time in between each one of these. If you happen to paint in a section and you feel like it's just really too bold, you can use a paper towel to blot the color and it will lift some of the color back off, leaving some of the color behind and uh, creating a lot more transparent uh, watercolor. And, and that way you can tone down the uh, the color as you're painting it on there. Uh, these were orchids that I'm painting and in the picture they're actually white and red or white and pink and in retrospect maybe I should have left them that way uh, they look a little bit like oranges right um, but I, I wanted to blend two different colors together and so I took a ch took a chance with the red and the yellow I think they turned out pretty pretty cool I don't know if there's any orchids in real life these colors uh, but I'm not necessarily trying to mimic real life as much as I am trying to make a larger than life bold uh, experience with flowers another thing to consider is that the color uh, is not really really long but there can be some downtime while you're waiting so I recommend doing two of these side by side that way, while one is drying, you can start working on the other one, and you can keep switching back and forth between the two. In the end, you'll have two uh, paintings to choose from, and either both of them will be good, or you can pick the one that is good to use uh, for your grade. <clears throat> Notice how I use the paper towel to um, both tone down the green a little bit, let some of the paper show through, and speed up the drying time at the same time. So, towards the end here, uh, I started filling in, trying to fill in more spots uh, faster as I could, and it kind of led to some problems with, like, paint blending into um, one color, blending into other colors. <clears throat> so, really kind of take your time and uh, try not to get in too big of a hurry. Of course, I sped this video up. Uh, so the video is only about eight or nine minutes long, but in reality, the the whole painting probably took me uh, two two hours or so uh, to do. So you're looking at least two class periods if you work diligently um, from the time class starts to the time class ends. Anyway, <clears throat> that's it. Um, thank you all for watching. Good luck on your Georgia Oki flower. It's your turn. Go make some art.